I will be preaching from our gospel lesson, that's John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Free to have it in front of you in whatever way you see fit. We call this Sunday Good Shepherd Sunday that always comes in the fourth Sunday of Easter. After we're done hearing about Thomas and the apostles and the post-resurrection appearances, we, we get these, this story about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. I was in a Bible study with a bunch of other pastors once, and one of the pastors looked at us all as we were preparing for Good Shepherd Sunday, and he said, honestly, how many of our people actually have a shepherd or no sheep? Most people said no, but at my church at the time, we had one shepherd, an honest-to-God shepherd in our congregation. Her name was Mary. She owned a thousand head of sheep. I was invited out every spring to bless the new lambs. Mary had an interesting relationship to Good Shepherd Sunday because I think she kind of understood better than most of us what sheep really are. So she always had a comment for me after the service on Good Shepherd Sunday. So I present to you Mary's top three comments on Good Shepherd Sunday. Number one, my first Good Shepherd Sunday. Walked up to me after church and said, looked me dead in the eye and with her gruff voice said, you know, they're not that nice, the sheep. There it is. (laughs) Number two, this is a couple years in, and Mary walked up to me after we had spent a lot of time talking about lambs, and then went, you know what lambs are for, right? It's called veal. Thank you for that, Mary. I appreciate it. Finally, number three, walked up to me in my last Sunday, in Good Shepherd Sunday, and said, you know, they're not too bright, those sheep. It's not exactly a compliment when he calls us sheep, right? If you get nothing else from this sermon, please get this. Jesus is our shepherd, and all we need to do is listen John chapter 10 is Jesus' only parable in the whole Gospel of John. And it begins by Jesus using, in this text, he, he starts by using this analogy of the sheepfold. Very truly I tell you, in verse 1, anyone who does not enter by the sheepfold but by the gate climbs in and and climbs in another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. He then starts talking about how the shepherd enters in and comes out, and the shepherd's job is to lead the sheep. That what marks the sheep is that they know the shepherd's voice and they will follow the shepherd. They won't follow the thief or the bandit because the sheep don't know. I asked Mary once, do your sheep know your voice? She said they actually do, despite not being all that bright. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know his voice. Not surprising that in verse 6 we hear that the crowd doesn't really understand what Jesus is saying, and so Jesus repeats himself and says, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate. Scripture is filled with I am statements, right? These wonderful I am statements. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine, you are the vine, you know, all these wonderful statements. But here Jesus uses kind of an odd one. I am the gate. That what marks Jesus' activity is that the sheep go in and go out and enter by the gate, and whoever enters by the gate will be saved. 
And better yet, when we are saved, we will find good pasture. Whether we are going out or coming in, we will find good pasture. What's amazing about all this is that in the story, what, is, what do the sheep actually have to do? There's no glorious quest to become enlightened for the sheep. There's no wonderful act of contrition that they have to do to apologize for being such foolish sheep. That's none of that. All the sheep need do in the story is listen. Listen to the shepherd's voice. It says something about God's grace, that how God's grace works in our life is that God promises us all these wonderful promises of beautiful pasture, or as Psalm 23 says, that goodness and mercy shall follow us. And the word in Hebrew for follow is closer to pursue or chase, so it's goodness and mercy shall chase after me all the days of my life. That what marks the activity of the sheep is simply listening. That's all we need to do. We need simply listen to God's promise of good pasture. We need simply listen and trust. And all those who enter by the gate will be saved. Of course, that is the trick, right? Because the hard part is that we're actually often listening to a whole lot of other things other than the shepherd. We are often listening to a whole lot of other messages. Whether those messages come from television or from the internet or from videos we watch or from political rallies we attend, we listen to a whole lot of other messages. Or maybe the thing we're listening to is actually the voice of our own mind, right? You know, I'll admit it. I can be an incredibly petty person, and I've got this voice in my head that tells me to be incredibly petty. We can listen to a whole lot of things other than the shepherd. We can listen to the voice of despair that seems so constant in our culture at the moment, the voice that says things aren't getting better and they won't ever get better and there's nothing you can do about it. It's all doom and gloom. We can listen to those voices. We can listen to the voices of our depression or anxiety, which tell us that we're not good enough, that we're not loved enough, that we never really were loved, and we won't really be loved, and we are not worthy of love. We can listen to those voices. We can listen to the voices of hate and judgment that say you are hated because of who you are, and who God created you to be. There are a whole lot of other voices we are listening to. And Jesus' warning about those other voices is true no matter what we say, right? Jesus says about those other voices, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. That is the nature of those other voices. They don't grant life, they steal and they kill and they destroy, but they do not grant life and they do not grant it abundantly. So the only question I have for you is this, who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? We have two options that Jesus presents us with. We can listen to the shepherd or we can listen to the stranger's voice to the thief and to the bandit. Who are you listening to? Jesus says in this reading, I am the gate. And I have to confess that when I first heard that and first really seriously looked at it, I didn't really know what he meant. I am the resurrection and the life I get. I am the gate. What does that mean? So I asked Mary, you're a shepherd, you have a gate. What do you hear when you hear, I am the gate? And she told me this wonderful story. She said her sheep, when they're, they have their full wool on them, she says they can, she has an electrified fence around her pasture land. 
And it's meant to keep the sheep in because on the outside there are coyotes, which will eat the sheep. And she said when her sheep are in full wool, what will happen is that the sheep can figure out a way to inch themselves out of the fence without getting electrified and using the wool as insulation. And then she goes, she said, but you got to remember, they're not that bright. So they get outside the fence, but they have no idea how to get back in. They cannot find their way back to the pasture. And so I'll come by, she says, I'll be driving by, and I'll see just kind of loose sheep standing there on the outside of the pen. They want to get back in, but they don't know how. They figured out how to get themselves out, but they can't get themselves back in. And she says, it's my job as the shepherd to open the gate so that they may enter and that they may have pasture. It's as good an illustration as any for, I think, what Jesus is saying, right? It's really easy to get outside the pasture land. It's really easy to listen to those other voices. It's really easy to find that stealing and killing and destruction that Jesus talks about in verse 10. But under our own efforts, by ourselves, we cannot find our way back in. Jesus promises that we may have life. Jesus promises that he is the gate by which we can enter. Jesus promises that we may have abundant life in this world. All we really have to do is listen. And I think even sheep can manage to do that. Amen. <laughs>